Quick answer at Picks 106, 1 800 Law 1010, 1 800 Law 1010.com. Front page of the TU this morning, uh, mm-hmm. uh, right next to the Trump stuff. Important story to Capital Land uh, the woman who uh, is getting out on parole after uh, killing her four month old daughter 30 years ago. Uh, Paul Paul actually has a, a, if I'm not mistaken, if I read that correctly, you worked for the public defender's office at the time and maybe even had to help write some of those appeals for her, her and her case? Yeah, I was 22 years old. I was in law school, and it was my first job. So one of the things we did is we wrote, I uh, was given this appeal on this very voluminous case, and it was super interesting, and it was kind of one of these things you were right in it as a law student. Yeah. So, so, Paul, when we heard the news yesterday of Mary Beth Tinning uh, will be paroled, what was your reaction? Well, you know, it's been 30 years, and uh, she finally admitted to having done the crime, uh, at least to Tammy Lynn. Again, we're talking about a woman who uh, had eight natural births. She had one adopted child, and only one lived past the age of four. Yeah, which is um, where the, no, the other one was four months. But, uh, come on, I mean— uh, the, the, yeah. well, what's going on here? Well, she's going to be living around the society. She poisoned her husband. I mean, she, she could do that yeah. again. So I'd never met her, but I had met her husband. During the appeal, he would bring stuff over, and he was trying to support this. And you know, he didn't believe that at all, and I don't think he believes it today since it looks like when she gets out, she's going to be living with him. But, yeah, uh, you know, everyone in that family was just uh, was, was either killed or poisoned, and there was one child that uh, was older that wasn't touched. And so... Here we've got a situation where uh, she's out. You know, is she a dangerous to society? You know, she's been primarily not only only attacking children, but just her own, right? Uh, and only again, only convicted of the death of one. And what she admitted to was the child was crying. She was severely depressed. She put the pillow over the child's uh, face to stop the child from crying. And then the child stopped crying. Ultimately, in, in her died. words, she did it because she thought she, she just figured the kid was going to die anyways. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she she felt again. She was a horrible person, horrible mother. You know, her defense was that she was sort of out of her, uh, you know, out of her mind at the time. Not quite a defense of uh, insanity, but just basically saying, you know, postpartum, and she just wasn't able to to control the family. But it was one of the. So she's out now. She's she's seventy five or seventy six, and so the question is, is you know, do we there is a right to parole? Uh, she was again. Her sentence was twenty years to life. She served thirty, and boy, you know, the parole board had a tough decision to make. Let me go. Let's go back because we weren't here. This I think some of this was in the in the mid eighties. But so she was convicted of the death of one child. Was she tried uh, 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 in the death of any of the other children, Paul? No, no. She had confessed to killing three, but the whole appeal had to do was whether or not that this confession was uh, voluntary, right? Because, you know, was it used through trickery? Did they catch her at a time when she just started feeling guilty about their deaths? And so, uh, but they did allow the admission to go in, but they only charged with the death of one, even though she had admitted to killing two more. Again, the evidence was real tricky. Um, You know, it sounds kind of a layup. Well, she admitted it. Well, let's do that. Well, those admissions were allowed in court. Um, And again, this jury kind of stayed out for a while and no one knew what she was going to do. She didn't testify at her own trial, which some people thought that that may have helped her um, tremendously. Had she done that, chose not to, which you don't have to. So, yeah, we've got this uh, uh, this story that, that now, again, her admission in 2011 has now anybody, any doubters that were out there have now sort of accepted the fact that she killed at least one of the child, one of the children. Talking to Paul Harding from Martin Harding and Mazzotti, 100Law1010 and 100Law1010.com. Talking about the Mary Beth uh, Tinning case. She's going to be paroled here. I, I guess I guess my question is, is what's the main thing they're looking for when they parole someone, that they won't do it again, they won't harm anyone again? Yeah, of course, you know, no guarantees, but yet they've no longer become. And again, what's happened to her for the last 30 years? Uh, right. She's been a bit of a model prisoner um you know she's volunteered to take all these sorts of i know but uh, what about the lad since 2007 it's been like eight different opportunities to parole what's how she's changed so dramatically in uh, you know in 11 years after eight opportunities hmm. <laughs> well I, I hear where you come down on it and i'm not sure what i do uh you know but at some point uh you know there's only so many years attached to your sentence right right and uh, they decided this so they're very intimate you know it's a tough decision to make you can see the media saying 
you know, we've had a cop killer release this year, and now we've got a baby killer release this year. So, you know, politically difficult one for them to yeah. do. Probably would have been easier if they kept her in. So I don't know what, what she's possibly like after 30 years of prison. Uh, but she'll also continue to be under supervision all the way, you know, for the rest of her life. She's just not going to be able to get out. And is that once a week? A what is that? Well, once a week, once a month? What is that? Probably starts out like with that to be a frequency, and then it's going to go down to a monthly, and then it's going to be more just sort of checking in. So they're going to continue to see how she operates. And again, 75-year-old woman uh, roaming around the Capital District, uh, my guess is that she's going to be the subject of uh, uh, people just knowing who she is and where she is at all times. Nice first case, Paul. You couldn't get some zoning, zoning yeah. ordinance? <laughs> you know what I mean? You had to get this one well, for your first one? <laughs> well, it was a loss. Just to keep in mind, we lost the appeal. And, uh, uh, so my first one was a was But intense, a huh? Intense. Wow. Sure was. Yeah, well, we got the right guy to talk about it. Good Thanks, stuff Paul. this morning, Paul. 1-800-LAW-1010, 1-800-LAW-1010.com. Paul Harding from Thanks, Martin Army's Audi. Take your pal. Bye, guys. Weekday mornings. And now at night, too. What? what? You can't put that on the air. Never stop us before. Check out Quinn and Cantera's Dark Parts. Weeknights from 9 to midnight on Pix 106.